Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a Ruger GP100 match champion chambered in my favorite caliber, 10mm. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. And please consider supporting the channel on Player, formerly Utreon, where we can do some types of videos that are no longer allowed on YouTube. This revolver is basically a factory-tuned GP100. That's what the Match Champion series is all about. And similar to the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. But what they've done with this is they've tuned the trigger, they've tuned the hammer. And this, of course, is in chambered in 10 millimeter, which is relatively rare. They make these every few years. They make a small batch, kind of like Glock with the 17L we recently acquired. And when they're gone, they're gone. I happened to see these, decided I've wanted this for a long time. Kind of compares to this match champion that Hammer's got that's chambered in 357 Magnum. Very similar. There's very little has changed some of the shapes on the barrel. The biggest change is the way the front sight mounts. So just be careful if you do get one and you want to change out the sights that they're different. Ruger does tend to do that. They make little changes like that to kind of torture the aftermarket. So the front sight blade, the way it mounts on the, the gun is a little bit different and they would not be perfectly compatible. Let me set the noses down. So you can see this has got a fairly short mounting blade and this has got a fairly wide mounting blade. So they change things over the years. A couple of the minor changes, you see that the match champions on a flat part of the barrel, it's round here. Both of them are half lug. This gun has a rubber hog grip, but it came with this hog hardwood grip and the hammer changed it out, so you can change the grips out. Overall, these are nice guns, and they do th several things. There's a centering boss on the trigger, there are centering shims on the hammer, all the things that you would do to take out slop and play in the action to result in a very, very smooth trigger pull. These are rated for to be dry fire safe. If I pull the hammer back, notice that how short the trigger travel is. That's it, that's the whole trigger travel. It's not the shortest trigger of these types of tuned revolvers. The Smith & Wesson is a little bit shorter trigger pull, but overall it's a very nice trigger. And when I go to double action, it's light and smooth, you know, light comparative for double action and very smooth. No stacking, no grit, nothing. It's just a very smooth overall trigger. Even pull it back, the hammer is very smooth with no stacking. So everything is tuned to be smooth. And that's one of the characteristics of the match, match Champion, is you get a very finely tuned action. Cylinder rotates smoothly, and it even comes out very smoothly. You push down the button, the, hammer, the cylinder pops out, rotates very smooth. And these use a triple locking. So you have this indent right here. That's one of the locking components. Of course, it locks at the back, and it locks up up front here. So when this cylinder closes, it is completely locked up at all three points, which means it's going to stay in time, it's not going to twist, it's not going to turn, you're going to get very good, reliable, repeatable function with this cylinder. And that's one of the characteristics of the Ruger revolvers. That's the, one of their designs. And the other design is the push button instead of pushing forward or pulling back. And that seems to be very, very reliable and I never had a problem getting the cylinder out of any of these Ruger revolvers. These are all stainless. It's a 4.2 inch half lug barrel as you see here and it holds six rounds. You can do it with or without moon clips so it will index off the front of the case so if you drop a 10 millimeter round in here it'll stop at the right place and the gun will operate reliably. The only thing is the ejector is useless so you have to you know, manually flick the cases out or you can use one of the three moon clips that come with it. And these are actually really smooth and easy to use. They're, these are nice, well-built, and when putting a round in or out of them is actually really easy to do. Comes with three of them, and then I bought these moon clip depot moon clips, and these, are, these just say GP100, doesn't specify match champion. This part of the revolver, the regular GP100 and the match champion are the same, so you don't have to worry about that. And these worked equally well. These have a matte finish, and the uh, factory ones are a little bit shiny, but that was the only discernible difference, and they worked just as smooth with each other. 
found this to be easy to operate at the range, comfortable to hold. One thing I did find, you know, the site, the front sight's fiber optic, and in good lighting, it really does light up. And the rear is a U, and we're sitting in here under studio lights, and you'll see that U is very well defined, pretty bright, and easy to see. And if I get a flashlight on the uh, fiber optic, if I get it just right, you'll see it really, the fiber optic will really light up good. So it does have good sights, but the one thing I did find is this paint that's in this U is actually in a recess. So if you're in poorer lighting, you know, if I were to kind of get rid of some of the lighting, it just tends to disappear. So you can see that that kind of fades out if the lighting's not so good. And but as soon as I remove my hand, it's exposed to those studio lights again, it's nice and bright. The indoor range we go to has better lighting than average indoor ranges, but still leaves a lot to be desired. The lighting can, if you're outdoors, you'd be able to see it well. So I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to put a little more paint to bring it over the edge of those ridges so that it's kind of on the outside and see how that goes. But I'm also looking to see there's a Williams fire sight that may fit this. That's a fiber optic rear sight. But the sight is adjustable, height and windage. And the front sight is theoretically drift adjustable, but you wouldn't really adjust the sight. The only reason you would drift this is if you're going to replace it because the, the uh, back one is fully adjustable. The back one did arrive way off. I was able to adjust the sight and get it on and actually able to shoot it reasonably well, but I did have a little difficulty simply because of the back sight effectively graying out. I do think it's a nice sight package and it's a nice grip. It's a nice looking revolver. The grip was very comfortable and it's set nicely in my hand. 10 millimeter is a reasonably powerful round, but this is a 37 ounce revolver. So I had no trouble holding it onto this, keeping it in place in my hand. It didn't slide around and the recoil was very reasonable. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna keep this nice looking wood grip, but you could buy a whole rubber grip. There's a simple screw you remove on the bottom, the grip slides off, you replace the grip with the one you want. And there's a pin here. If I replace the sight, you push the pin out, put the sight on that you want, and slide the pin back in. So the things that you might be inclined to change are relatively easily changed. It's 9.5 inches front to back, and as I mentioned previously, it weighs 37 ounces. There's nothing small about this, but this isn't meant to be a deep concealed revolver. This is home defense competition, and yet people do actually do competitions with revolvers range, collection, you know, if you're looking for a deep conceal, there's a number of them on the market that are going to be much better suited to that. You could conceal carry this, but it's bulky compared to many other choices that are out there. But from a nightstand gun or something like that, this would actually do well. A couple things I didn't mention. It has a 11 degree target crown, because this is you know, designed as a match gun. I realized after I'd finished filming that I had failed to actually show you the barrel. I tend to show the barrel during the reviews. So you can see that I've got my light tube so you can see inside the barrel. It's a very well machined, very sharp rifling. It's conventional rifling, of course, and you could really see that target crown. So overall, the barrel is very well done. And from a safety perspective, it has a transfer bar. So as I pull the hammer back, the transfer bar comes up because of course the trigger's coming back. When the, if the hammer is pushed forward and the trigger is not held, that transfer bar will drop down. So I'm going to simulate that. I'm going to pull the trigger, and then I'm going to let go of the trigger. And as the hammer goes forward, you see that that transfer bar is moving out of the way. By the time the hammer hits, that transfer bar will be gone and the hammer won't be able to hit the firing pin. But if I pull the trigger and hold it, like which would be normal, you see the transfer bar stays in place. And then it would hit the transfer bar, which would hit the firing pin and fire the round. So these are drop safe, which means you can load six and not worry about it going off if you drop it. And all the Ruger revolvers tend to use that mechanism and for many, many, many years have been drop safe in that way. The MSRP, they're proud of these things. MSRP is 1239. They don't make a lot of them. When they do make them and they send them out there, people know what they are and you're likely to pay pretty close to MSRP or in most cases over MSRP. So don't expect to get one of these things for the price of a Glock. They, they are priced accordingly with what they are. So if you're in the market for a fun, cool match type revolver, this might be one you might want to look at. 
Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Player, Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere. And thank you.